identifying your style. You don't have to go out and look for it or copy somebody else's, it's in you. It's what you are attracted to. So when I walk into a shop, and it's, I love homeware shops, and um, I go in and I think, oh, that'll look nice in my house, but I already know I'm going to put it in my studio. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll go home and I'll go, but look what I bought, look what I bought, it's incredible. So um, I tend to go with things that I'm attracted to, and it took me a long time to, to realise that I was actually allowed to do that. I was allowed to be myself, I was allowed to be my own, you know, creative person, because a lot of people don't like to call themselves an artist when they're a photographer, because they consider, you know, artists to be either incredible drawers or painters and, and things like that. But when I think about what I do with something like that, you know, I found a concept, I got inspired, I made it, I created an image, I captured it, I composed it, I then artworked it, and now it's hanging on a, on a, in a print. How am I not an artist? I created that, nobody else did. That's mine, it's me, it, it shares what I love to do and it tells a story to people that see it. So I'm an artist, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that I am, and I think that when you, when you look at that, you know, you can start to really identify your style. You can start to identify the things that you love to do and the colours that you incorporate into your sessions, the, the textures, if you like those things, the props that you like to buy, the wraps, the everything, absolutely everything, the bonnets, the headbands, all those things. I every now and then go through my studio and I take out everything that I no longer use that I kind of look at and go, mm, yeah, well, I'm not really a fan of that anymore, and I remove it. Because when my clients come in and they choose things, they've got a choice, they're always going to choose something I love. So I got, an, I got an email once from a photographer I had mentored, and, and she was like, you know, I'm having a really hard time editing, you know, this image. And I said, and I looked at the image, and I said, well, what is the problem with it? And she said, it's the... Um, the blanket, and I said, well, she said, I just don't even like it. And I said, well, why is it in your studio? Why is it there as an option? You know, identify you, your style, and remove everything that doesn't fit with what you love. Your studio and your business should be filled with things that you love, not what, you know, and it's okay to have things in there that other people have if you really love them, but just don't have them because somebody else has got them and is using them. So identifying it, it's, it's in there, it's in all of us. You just have to look within and not at everybody else. And you know, when we talk about being unique, it's, I mean, how? we're all different. We're not sheep. We're all unique in every single way. We have our own little, you know, bits and pieces going on that make us a little bit quirky, a little bit fun, a little bit shy, a little bit outgoing. We're all different in every single way. So what makes you unique? And I think my branding makes me unique. I haven't seen a logo out there like mine. Actually, no, I have, but someone had completely copied it. <laughs> but that's fine. <laughs> but they're obviously still trying to find their style and they don't know that they're unique because they've probably been, never been told that they're unique. I'm a unique person because I've been told I'm unique. I just didn't believe it for a long time, but now I believe it because I can create something like that that nobody else has ever created before. And, um, and it's in all of you to be able to do that. So yeah, those products have to be able to represent you, your brand, your style, and make you unique so that when your clients find you online, they're like, wow, this person really stands out from everybody else. They're different, I need them. My favorite clients are the ones that can't afford me but they find a way to afford me because they love my style, they love my brand, and I've communicated with them the value in what I do, which is an incredible thing. But yeah, I think Kenna has a question. I do, I just wanna push here a little bit um, in terms of, I love what you're talking about, that, you, that we are all unique. But I know a lot of people struggle, including myself, in identifying what those things are. I love that you talked about, you walk into a store and you see what you're attracted to, but do you have any like exercises or things that have helped you identify what makes you unique that, that people could do or do 
you know, are there other people having problems with that as well? <laughs> Um, I don't think I've ever done any specific exercises for it, but I got asked once, what was my problem? You do incredible work. What is your problem? It's finding the confidence, I think, within yourself to look for it and then share it. And the easiest thing for me is that, um, you know, I don't share a lot of my, my personal history and things like that, and I think that when we look at people who are succeeding in certain areas of their business and, or different genres of, of photography or even other, other businesses outside photography, when we see them as successful people, we don't often realise what it actually took to get there. Um, you know, so 17 years ago I moved to, to Brisbane from a small town and Brisbane's a big city. I had $14 in my bank account and a backpack and I was 19 years old, I had nothing. So everything that I have created now was through hard work, but I'd come from nothing. So it's that attitude and that mentality of, I've got nothing to lose. I had to stop worrying though, and be told, you know, really stop worrying about what other people are doing and comparing myself to them, because I was. And it's, you know, it's funny because we've created this incredible group, which you know, has so many members for this boot camp. And when I go on there, there's so many people saying, like my page, like my page. And, you know, I was one of those people that did a blog post years ago and put like 50 images on it. And I was looking for gratification, but not from clients, from other photographers. When I stopped looking for gratification from other photographers, I started to look within myself and find those things, find that I was unique. I didn't have to worry about what they were doing. When I stopped focusing on other businesses and other photographers, I started to realise what it was in me that made me unique. And I got the confidence. And then I had to think to myself, right, I've got nothing to lose. If it doesn't work, I'm going to throw myself out there. You know, I've had people say, how did you get on Creative Life? Because, you know, my life has blown up in the last two years. I've managed to have incredible contact with people around the world and, you know, something I'm so grateful for. But, um, you know, it wasn't like I'd won the lottery or I'd been given a ticket. I actually had to put myself out there to do it. And if you are too scared to put yourself out there and, and communicate who you are as a person, how unique you are and what you do and what you create, people aren't going to find you. You're going to blend into the sea of photographers that are already out there. So find that confidence within yourself and have a think about what do you have to lose? Don't be scared about what other people think. Fear is the number one thing that will hold you back from doing anything or achieving anything. Don't sit on the fence, dive. We're all incredible people and we have so much to share with the world. It's, it's a wonderful thing. So there are no exercises except for give yourself a kick up the butt, get out there and do it and share what you create.